Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and if you've been watching my YouTube channel or my blog, you know that I've been working on a raccoon lately. This this project is kind of stretching out a little bit because it's been just such nice weather I've been playing outside. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how I put the aluminum foil on the head armature to get all the shapes right. I'm also going to show you how I rebuilt the, the toes um, I showed you how to how I put the toes on in the last video and it, it didn't really work all that well when I was putting the paper mache on so I'll show you how I changed it. And I also did some experiments to try to find a paste that I could use with the shop towels um, that doesn't use any Elmer's glue just because Elmer's glue tends to be kind of expensive uh, and I, I tried a couple of things I'm going to tell you about that. I found one that I think is really perfect. When I was working on the head, I found a drawing tutorial online that was really good for helping me find the shapes and especially for finding exact place where the eyes would go and this nice ruff that goes around his cheek. So I'm going to put a link to that down below. Make sure that you go check that out because it was really helpful. Now it is definitely possible to put the fine details like the eyes, the eyelids, and nose uh, with the aluminum foil, but I'm not doing it today because I found a, a brand of air dry clay that I wanted to play with. So that's what I'm going to be using. If you don't want to use air dry clay, then just go ahead and put the details on with your aluminum foil when you're making the head. Now I'm going to run through a lot of this pretty quickly. The first thing I did was to fill in the cheeks, uh, making sure that the cheeks, the puffiness of it went behind the line where the eyes go. I want to be really careful to make sure that those eyes have, have room when I get around to actually adding them with my air dry clay. Then I just kept building up shapes and um, made enough room uh, between the eyes, just a, a little thin pieces of aluminum foil on each side of the pattern so that the eyes will be the right distance apart and just kept filling it in. Uh, adding more and more aluminum foil just like you would if you were using clay. It isn't exactly like clay to work with. It's obviously not as intuitive, but you can get basically the same results if you're really, really careful. The, the whole process is basically done exactly the same way as all the projects in my book that's called Make Animal Sculptures with Paper Mache Clay. So if you have that book, you'll be really familiar with this whole process. Now a lot of people prefer to use the hot glue gun instead of the masking tape that I'm using. I have tried it. I really don't like it. So this is just the way I'm doing it. You might prefer to use the hot glue gun. One thing that you will want to do is kind of squish your aluminum foil after it's been taped on just so that you can get the right shape. Again, kind of like using clay. You can push it around. You can smash it with a hammer if you need to. You can smooth it off with a flat tool or a stick. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the aluminum foil to get it in the shape you want it. Now the tutorial that I mentioned does have the shape of the ears on there. It was really helpful. Um, the, basically they're just rounded triangles and once you get the first one looking right on, on your uh, raccoon, just kind of hold them up there and see if, if it looks the way you want it to and then use that as a pattern for the second ear. I put more foil around the edge of the ear too just to soften that edge and make it look like he had some fur. Now obviously I ran through that process really fast. It took uh, at least two hours for me to get that on there and I actually the next day I did a few more adjustments. I showed you how I put the toes on in my last video using some wire and I wrapped them up with some aluminum foil. I put them on the, uh, the hands and the feet with some masking tape and it didn't work really well today when I was putting on the paper mache because the, the toes were too close together and it was really hard to wrap uh, the paper mache around them and get it nice and smooth. So I actually took the toes off of the hands and the feet. I wrapped them again with the, with more um, aluminum foil because I kind of messed up the old ones. And I wrapped them with paper mache before they went back onto the feet. I had to let them dry uh, in, before I could put them back on because I wanted to use my hot glue gun. And so I just stuck them in the oven about 250 degrees for maybe half an hour just, just to get it dry enough so that it wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't be so wet that it would interfere with the hot glue. I put them back on and, and covered up the, the top just with, with more paper mache just to kind of get it to blend in. 
And I think that the hand and the feet that I've gotten done so far work an awful lot better. I still haven't done these ones on the back, but I am going to take them apart and do them over, even though it takes a long time. Uh, I'm going to do it anyway because I think they came out a lot better than they did before. So I'm trying to say, ignore what I told you in my last video and do it this way instead. Now I also did some experiments with the paste. I, like I said, I wanted to find a paste that didn't use Elmer's glue because it's kind of expensive. And so I tried one that I found online. It came very highly recommended by someone who uses it with newspaper. And I'm sure it would work really well for that purpose. But with blue shop towels, it really doesn't work at all. And I didn't know that, of course, until I had covered the <laughs> entire raccoon, almost, um, and then let it dry overnight. That was when I found out that uh, there was a real problem with it. It was a, a wheat paste that was cooked with a very small amount of, of all-purpose flour in it. There was a lot of water and very little flour. What happened was it got dry and it stuck everything together, but it was still soft and squishy just like the towels. I mean, it really didn't feel much different from just a plain old dry towel. So obviously that isn't going to work for paper mache. It's just you need a hard shell and that didn't do it. So I made up this uh, paste that I've been wanting to try for a long time. It's made out of um, cornstarch, vinegar, and sugar, and water. And I'm going to put a link to the original recipe right down below. I really, really like it, but it did not work exactly as the recipe shows. It, the, they asked for two cups of water in total. Uh, after I had it all mixed up and it was cooked and everything, I added another cup of water. Now before I added that last water, and I, I just had two cups of water in here, it was so thick that it just kind of gobbed on. You know, just it didn't really well, go on smoothly. And it also didn't absorb into the, to the paper. You'd put it on here and the, the, the side close to the raccoon would stick on. But then the top layer of the paper would peel off and it would delaminate right when you were trying to work on it. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't working as the recipe shows. But when you add that extra cup of water, it worked really well. It's dry now and it's really hard. Uh, it's nice and smooth. The For some reason, this paste really helps to um, to get the edges feathered in together really nicely. So it's, it's a very smooth surface. I really like that. And I think that this is going to be a really nice paste to use with um, blue shop towels. Now in my next video, I'm really hoping that I can get this guy completely finished. Um, there's going to be another experiment with the uh, with the tissue paper fur. I'm really hoping that works, but if it doesn't, we can always try something else. So stay tuned and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.